Thanks, Kerry. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to say a little bit about some of this work we're doing. So I'm gonna, not going to talk about GANs at all. There won't be a neural network in sight. Uh, I'm going to talk about a very different way of thinking about uh, generating synthetic time series data. Um, let me just uh, go to this. So the way we think about generating time series data is to sort of turn the time series into a whole lot of features uh, and then try to generate data that matches those features as closely as possible. So by features, I mean anything that you can compute from the data that sort of provides a summary statistic of something about the data. So it might be the length of the series, it might be the seasonal period. So if it's monthly data, that would be 12, for example. It might be the autocorrelation uh, information in the, in the data. It could be spectral entropy or any, any statistic at all that gets computed from the time series that tells you something about it. So I'm going to switch between this, my slide and some work in R. So let me just demonstrate um, a few time series and what I mean by features from them. So I'll just load some packages. And uh, so here's an example. Here's an example of a very famous time series. This is the number of spots on the sun over about 300 years. And so you can see that it has this period, this, well, not quite periodicity, it's aperiodic, it's cyclic behavior. And from that, we can get uh, autocorrelations that look like this, or the spectral density that looks like that. Um, so just show you a range of different time series. This is Google stock prices uh, over about three years. Uh, so you can see it wanders around like a random walk. Here's the number of passengers and air, air, um, air flights over about 12 years in the early days of air travel. So you can see that this is trended, it's seasonal, there's increasing um, variation over time. And here's a more recent one. This is half hourly electricity demand data in the UK, where you can see the very strong daily pattern and this relatively strong weekly pattern as well. And from the same, from the data, I, I can compute the autocorrelation function and the spectral density. So, um, let me make a list of those series and then just compute a bunch of features on them. So the TS features function that I'm using computes a whole lot of things on each series. So the strength of the trend, um, the whether the trend is curved or not, various types of autocorrelation function statistics and entropy and so on. Um, this tells this left-hand column is the frequency of the data. So for the first two, there's, they're, they're not treated seasonally, so the frequency is just one observation per period. The monthly data is 12 observations per period, and the half hourly data is 336 half hours per week. So the idea is we want to take a set of data, compute some features, and then find a series that looks like that, that has the same sort of features. Okay, before I show you how that works, let me just talk about how you generate data that's flexible. So we're going to use a statistical model. So one of the earliest ever models used in time series analysis more than 100 years ago was the autoregressive model that was actually introduced to deal with that, those sunspot data. Um, and it's just a linear function of the past few values of a series with a random error term. So it looks like that. So every observation is some linear function of the past p observations plus a random noise term epsilon, which we'll assume is normal. Um, so the type of model that I'm going to use to, to demonstrate synthetic data is called a mixture autoregressive model, which consists of a, a, a few autoregressive components, each one of which is selected with a, with a probability alpha k. So the, the next observation will be equal to a linear function of the past ones, but the coefficients will depend um, on a draw from a probability distribution um, up, up to capital K. And each of those will have a different variant. So that gives you a mixture of normals. So you can get a whole range of different um, types of data. You can get you know, stationary data or non-stationary data. You can get non-linear, you can get non-Gaussian, you can get cycles, you can get heteroscedastic data. So it's an incredibly rich way of generating uh, different types of data from what's quite a simple model. It's linear with a mixture of, of Gaussians on it. So if I go back to, to my R, let me just choose some parameters at random. So I'm going to generate one, one series. It'll be frequency 12. 
um, it'll only have two components and it'll be 120 observations long. And if I just generate some data randomly, there's one draw. Let me just do this a few times. Let me show you the range of possible values we can get. So there's another one. So you can see a, a really rich variety. That one's a bit seasonal. That one's also a little bit seasonal and so on. Um, or I can do it with multiple seasonal periods. Uh, so this is mimicking half hourly data. Sorry, this is mimicking daily data with a potential weekly pattern and a potential yearly pattern um, over a few years. So the, the benefit of these models is that it can generate a, a very wide range of different patterns. Okay, so now the idea is let's give it some targets. So I was just doing that with random parameters, but let's choose the parameters so that it gives us um, a series that has features that we desire. So for example, suppose I want my entry to be equal to 0.2, my first lag autocorrelation to be equal to 0.6, my first lag seasonal autocorrelation, so that will be 12 in this case, also equal to 0.6. The strength of seasonality, that's a measure of how strong the seasonality is. So I'm gonna make it pretty strong, we'll make it 0.7. And the peak, that is the month in which the peak occurs, I want that to be May, I want that to be month five. So we'll just go ahead and generate some data. And so this is trying to find the parameters of a model which gives data that has those, that collection of features that uses a genetic algorithm. Um, so it's a, uh, it's a very sort of rich optimization environment in which it's mutating and selecting and mutating and selecting. And it's trying to find a set of the parameters which will give a time series of, with features as close as possible to these ones. It's not always possible to find exactly those um, features because features are related to each other. And, and for example, if I chose very high entropy, but also very high ACF, that, that, that doesn't exist. Uh, that's not possible for those two things to be exist in the same series. So it's doing its best to find something that um, mimics what we want, that gives us the features that we want. And it's buzzing away here. Um, it'll take a few iterations to find it. And uh, eventually it'll come back with, with a series which it says this is the best it can find. Now, because it's a genetic algorithm, it will depend on where it starts. And so you might, and if you train it a few times, run it a few times, you might end up with um, closer to, the, to a set of features that you want. Once it's chosen the parameters, it will then generate a, se a random series from those parameters. So you can generate lots of different series with the same parameters and have quite different looking series. The, the point is not that the series should look the same, but that they should have that collection of features. Um, so uh, it's just measuring, um, uh, I'm just looking at the chat while I'm, while I'm talking, it's just, to me, it's just measuring Euclidean distance on the, in the feature space. So we've chosen six features here, so a six dimensional feature space, and it's just trying to uh, minimize the Euclidean distance in the feature space. Um, because this is live and I didn't run this before, it's taking a little longer than I expected, but that's gonna buzz away and it'll choose a, um, eventually find a series which has that particular collection of features. Um, hopefully not too long. And while that's happening, let me just say a little bit about um, mixture autoregressive models. So they're a relatively new model uh, that uh, has been sort of developed in the last few years as a, as a rich environment for simulating and generating data. Um, because they're so flexible, they're not actually that useful for, um, for forecasting or not as useful for forecasting as some other approaches. Just typical of you know, the trade-off between being super flexible or being um, you know, a little bit more rigid, but then getting better prediction. Um, so these tend to be very flexible, which means that you can generate a huge variety of things but I haven't found them quite as useful for forecasting as I have for synthetic data for generating unusual and interesting looking time series data. Another thing is we, we um, ran these mixture autoregressive models trying to mimic um, series from a rich database of, of series, like where we had tens of thousands of different time series from different contexts. And we said, well, can we mimic, can we generate time series that look like these ones as closely as possible? And can we generate data 
that are in the gaps that have feature sets that we've never seen in practice. So we look at the feature space of data that we've seen in practice and then say, well, what, what's a feature space that's not, what's a set of features that we've never seen that particular combination before or it's not, not close to anything. And we found that the MAR models were actually able to generate data that looked like existing data, but also looked like data that we'd never seen before. So it was the feature space was bigger than the real feature space of data sets that we had seen. Um, the other thing you can do with these models is that you can take an existing series and say, well, give me data that looks like this series. And if I have time, although this is taking longer than I thought, if we have time, I'll, I'll show you an example where we've done that as well. Um, just while I'll switch over to my slides while that's running and just show you what I've got next. So this is actually being generated using the gratis package. Um, so the gratis package has been generated, has been developed by me and two co-authors. This is Yan Fei Kang and this is Fung Li on my last trip to China and maybe it won't be one for a while yet. Um, the package is available on Yan Fei Kang's GitHub site or on CRAN. Um, so now we're done. Um, let's have a look at the features we got from that. So that we aimed for 0 0.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 and 5, and that's what we got. So not quite the same, but you know, similar. If I show you what the um, data looks like, so that's the data there. And remember, we're trying to um, generate data with this particular collection of features. So you can see that it's got strong seasonality, um, low entropy, which means that it's got a, high, a strong signal pretty high autocorrelations. So it's, it's mimicked the data relatively well. Um, okay, I've probably got time to do one more of these. So um, I'm gonna take a, an existing set of data, which is uh, air passenger data that you saw before. And I'm gonna try to generate data that looks like that. I'm going to uh, choose a particular set of features that I wanna work with. So the features that I want are these ones, oops. So I'm going to quite a long dimension of um, a, a, a long vector of, of features. Um, this time I have run it before, so I know what happens. Um, so it goes away and it'll try to mimic that set of features. And um, while that's doing that, let me just uh, switch over to this, as well as do, using the gratis package. Um, let me just reboot that, as well as using the gratis package in R to, do, to generate it using code. We also have a shiny app which allows you to choose a set of features. Um, so this is on, on our Shiny server. So you can choose a set of features and say, give me data that looks like this. Um, so if I said I wanted, again, let's say quarterly data, and I want, um, again, I'll choose, I'll choose something with a bit of trend and a bit of seasonality. So let's make the trend fairly strong and we'll make the seasonality fairly strong as well. And we'll say, just use those two features go away and generate some data with two features that should be relatively quick. Um, and it comes back and we have a look at the data set that it's generated. And there you go, downward trends and some seasonal, some seasonal patterns. Uh, this one's finished. So the original features, uh, let me just, that was the original data that I was starting with. And this is the generated data which has simply been generated matching on features and nothing else. And you can see that it's actually pretty close um, in terms of structure and style, not in terms of actual numbers, but in terms of the, the visual features, which we're trying to mimic here. Okay, so uh, that will do, I think. I think I'm out of time. Uh, my code and my slides and everything are on that uh, web link there. And that's how you can find me, thanks. Uh, thanks.